I'm a teacher. How can I compete with this? What is my job? Seriously, education used to be kids coming to one person, the only source of information for learning. Now we have encyclopedias, libraries, the internet, Google, and yes, even though it is a terrible source, Wikipedia. I'm currently in my second year of teaching band in Big Timber, and since I'm from there, I had a huge advantage of knowing most of the kids and them knowing me. So it was no surprise when I showed up doing things like this. Uh, so on the first day of school, freshmen and new kids come early to learn the layout of the school, and I had this new girl come into my classroom to check things out. Her name is Krisha, and she walks in and gives me the up-down. Silence for a while. Then she says, oh, where's the teacher? I say, uh, hi, I'm Mr. Fieri. She looks at me and says, what are you, 12? <laughs> That's why I'm growing out my beard. Despite this, my first year of teaching went surprisingly well, but even with a huge home court advantage, first year of teaching is hard. I spent most of my time saying things like, why aren't you playing that right? And you need to do this, and you have to do it this way. I was essentially forcing my kids to learn. I was a bucket of information, constantly dumping knowledge onto kids, hoping some of them would absorb it. Year one of teaching, I had this really interesting sixth grade class with particularly obnoxious kids. They would fight with each other and talk all the time. They had no discipline and no self-control. My solution to dealing with them, I took their instruments away and we went to the streets. Marching band. You are at attention! You should not be talking, you should not be moving, you shouldn't even be breathing. Left foot first, guide right. There I was in the middle of Fifth Street, forcing discipline and education onto my students. I think a couple of the neighbors probably called the police. There are four main types of management strategies. Here I was in the top left-hand corner, high control and high involvement. I really wanted to establish myself as a leader. Tens of thousands of dollars in student debt, I was gonna make sure they knew I was smart. But I wasn't, it wasn't working. And then one day Tyler started telling the kids how to march and boom, they listened, light bulb. What would happen if the students were the ones running the class? They seemed to want to work together, so I thought, okay, let's try it. The kids walked into class the next day, and I said, grab your instruments and work on this song. They sat down and were really confused. I wasn't conducting them. They didn't know what to do. They wanted my help, and I refused. They fought and fought and fought, and it was a little scary. Mass chaos in the classroom for weeks. Fights all the time, and I just sat there. Man, I'm a jerk. I just sat there and let them struggle and fight and complain, but I knew slowly that they would start to figure things out, and pretty soon, they were collectively a better teacher than I will ever be. I realized that these kids, what they really need was to have someone support them. They need training wheels to help them get going. I helped them develop some strategies for working as a team. All they really need is a little bit of guidance. These kids are crazy smart, and when you let them teach their, themselves, they learn very fast. I became a different type of teacher, so here I am now at the bottom left. When you become less controlling and more involved, the kids become responsible for their own learning. They take a leadership role in their education, and it's really, really fascinating to watch. Those sixth graders started saying things like, uh, hey guys, we should go back to measure 16 and maybe play to 22. The saxophones are playing a wrong note and the trumpets are a little bit too loud. Can the drummers maybe give us a steady beat so we can stay in tempo? My jaw hit the floor. Where are these kids coming up with this stuff? And then I had the realization that they had this information all the time. I just wasn't giving them the opportunity to say it. So in my second year of teaching, I decided that I would try this out on a more grand scale. I teach fifth through 12th grade, and I wondered if this would work for all grade levels. Instead of starting the year establishing myself as the leader of the classroom, what would happen if I was more of a coworker with them? Of course, the transition was tough, and it took a lot of patience from both me and the students. In some cases, four or five weeks went by with almost no progress. I found myself asking if it was really worth all the struggle. It felt like zoo animals had gotten loose in all of my classrooms. But after things sorted themselves out, amazing things started to happen. Here is an eighth grader conducting her classmates at our concert. She did great working with her peers, but it didn't start that way. 
Kids would come to class screaming and leave bawling. They would yell at each other and tell each other that they were terrible players, terrible musicians, and should just stop playing. They were really behaving like animals. It was such a struggle for me to be patient with them and let them act like this without intervening. But part of this process is self-discovery and learning how to be self-sufficient. So I tried to focus on the positives every day. But every day I would go home and feel terrible about what was happening. Pretty soon though, it finally started to work. By not teaching, I have discovered my role as a teacher. Kids don't need me to teach them all this information. They have the internet, Google, and their textbooks, and endless resources. All these kids need is a push in the right direction and some positive encouragement. When these kids teach each other, they become excellent teachers and amazing students. So by not teaching them, I am teaching them to work together and use their resources. We work together to be critical listeners and critical thinkers. I am helping them be curious learners, and I am pushing them to be better people. This method is by no means perfect, and I have a lot more to learn. But I am really proud of all of my kids. I am so lucky to go to a job every day where kids make me so insanely proud. At our last concert, I was so encouraged by my high schoolers playing with such expression and passion. By the end of the song, I had tears streaming down my face. I cannot wait to see how far these kids will go and to see how much they will teach me in the next year. Being their teacher has been a truly humbling, amazing, wonderful experience. And I'm really excited to continue to not teach them. Thank you. <laughs>